hiring center right women to seek public office at all levels across the country and become effective leaders as well. Um, I'm going to keep this presentation pretty high level. Um, you know, we're just sort of doing some back to back presentations today. Last time around, I went in depth into fundraising. So, Vanessa does have a copy of that presentation. Um, if you would like one, feel free to reach out to Vanessa. She can share that with you all. Um, so this time around, we're just talking about really what these next five weeks leading up to Election Day represent and what your priorities should be. Um, so first and foremost, keep doing the basics. Um, while there is a big shift as we near Election Day, we need to do some basic things like raise money. Um, you know, candidates can get spend all their time out in the field, but realistically, you need to raise and spend money. And as I mentioned in my last presentation last month, there's no substitute for the candidate themselves in terms of making these asks. So it's still really important to schedule call time um, and to make sure that you are setting aside and budgeting time. Um, that if it has to get shifted, it has to get shifted somewhere else within that week to be constantly bringing dollars in the door. Um, going back to donors who have not reached their contribution limit is going to be a big focus for this period of time as well. Um, there is nothing that stops you other than maybe your own sort of sense of embarrassment or discomfort with the process of asking money from folks who maybe gave you $200 and they can give you another $200 now. Um, in terms of making those asks, those subsequent asks a little easier, I do recommend giving specific goals. Um, so saying, you know, letting them in on your strategy. What block are you targeting? How many pieces of lit do you need to drop? How many voters can be in the polls on election days? You know, being really specific and intentional with that is, is a reason for them to double down. Uh, the other thing, uh, so here's the contribution limits. I just want to remind everyone so that they know um, and can categorize their list as to who has and has not hit this limit. Uh, Obviously, keeping up with reporting requirements. So that's just a non-starter. You need to follow the law, know the law, make sure that you're keeping up with your requirements, but also because if you do want the matching funds, you need to get that reported, and you don't want to leave money on the table. So these races in particular are really important to make sure that you're keeping up with reporting. If you need to bring on a volunteer to help you in this capacity, then do so. It's worthwhile because this is a really big deal. Um, in terms of cash flow, making sure that you are bringing money in the door, but that you have all your bills paid to date. So, you know, if you've got time on the rest of this rainy Sunday, making sure that you're just balancing your campaign right now. Um, pay all of the vendors who you've hired to date, and then make sure that anticipated costs, like if you have an office rent that needs to be paid, making sure that that's set aside, and that you can build a budget for these last five weeks independent of those fixed costs that you're already anticipating. And you know, we're all in this room, but it is always worth repeating, and I'll repeat it a few times, be conservative with this. Um, you know, build this like it's a business. Um, be conservative about how much you're going to be able to bring in and how much you need to spend. Um, so getting to your vote goal. Uh, you should already have your vote goal by this point in the campaign. That is the 50% plus one of voters. Um, that you're going to need to win the election, right? You need the majority of voters to support you. Um, and this is not total registered voters, it's those who are going to show up on election day. So again, being realistic and conservative when we're doing these numbers, you can't just say, I'm going to take every Republican that lives in my district and count them in the bank as voters. If they haven't voted in the last three municipal elections, unless you have a specific relationship and reason why you think they're going to show up this time around when they haven't in the past, do not bank that as a voter. And do not count that yet towards your vote goal. Um, so as you're building your vote goal, don't take the base for granted. Um, we cannot assume that every Republican is going to show up to a New York City Council municipal election. So you need to give them a reason to vote. They need to absolutely know your name. Um, and if you are targeting them and asking them to come out and vote because you are like my non policy, because you are the only Republican in the race, they need to know that and that needs to be synonymous in their names, which means they probably have to hear it three or four or five times. Um, the race should be defined, and I also want to go back to, you know, in talking with donors, as winnable but close. As in the impact of every single voter and the impact of every single dollar in the door over this period is outsized. It's 
super necessary. Everyone you're talking to, you need them on your team if they want you to be successful. Um, and so I like to say winnable and close with both voters and dollars. And those are the two main functions of the candidate, is earning votes and earning money for the campaign. So you're gonna persuade voters until you hit your goal. So if our conservative estimates of what our base looks like, right, we're in New York City, is not going to get us to 50 plus one, then we need to persuade additional voters. And so think about um, how many times you're told no in a week. As a candidate, during these five weeks, if you're not being told no, and if you're not talking to voters that aren't going to support you, you're probably not aggressive enough in this area of your strategy. It doesn't mean talking to people that would never vote for you, but in searching for that middle and in pulling people into coalitions and in building this, this vote goal, you're going to face some people that are just not gonna support you. Maybe they go to church or have a personal relationship with your opponent. Maybe they you know, have volunteered at a certain community organization that gets funds from the city council right now, right? They may have a quote unquote good reason, but you still need to be trying to reach those people, building trust and building authenticity with them. Um, if they're going to the polls on election day, you should touch them in some way. So these high propensity voters, or have a good reason why you're not touching them. Because they're the chairman of the Democratic Party, they are activists, they're the cousin of the candidate, right? Like, there are a lot of people you can cut out of your voter list and, and folks that you want to target, but you need to just know why we leave off a big chunk of the population, and you need to leave enough in the middle to give you some buffer on either end. So those folks, those independent voters that have shown up to every city council election, go back and just make sure that there's a strategy. And that message is persuasion. It's not necessarily get out the vote. Um, and so keeping the get out the vote message for folks that you know and have banked, and we can go to the next one. Oh, uh, back one, there we go. Um, so once you've convinced someone to vote for you, once they're firmly in your corner, you're hitting them with get out the vote messages until they vote. This other group, this independent group, is still gonna get hit with persuasion messages. Um, and so early voting is a great tool that we should be taking advantage of at this point. You know, it's not a matter of an unfair advantage to one side or the other. If we fail to embrace this, then we have failed to be successful in these campaigns. So it's a tool you should be using, especially for anyone that's gonna be helping you on election day. Those people need to vote early, so that they are fully available on election day. Um, I've run, by the way, a little bit of background about me. I've run campaigns in Boston, Massachusetts. Um, for Republican candidates in Boston um, and been pretty successful in terms of getting them into runoff elections. Um, so one thing about the city of Boston a few years ago is you couldn't vote early or absentee if you were going to be in the city that day. So all of our staff had the budget time to get on the subway and go back to our polling locations and vote and then get back. And so then we had to budget two hours. So if you really have someone on your team that's planning to be with you on election day, Maybe you need to insist that they vote first thing in the morning if they don't vote early, so that then it's off their plate, off their mind. Again, every vote counts in these races, um, so we need to take it really seriously. We can't leave a volunteer, a grassroots supporter on the table. Um, that said, if your volunteers are coming from other districts, still make sure that they vote in their district. Um, so with that, once they vote, do two things. Say thank you and ask them to volunteer with you on election day. So if we can bank these early votes and we're touching those, you know, um, firmly in our corner, you know, high propensity, Republican, like-minded, they've been convinced, your cousin, your neighbor, your, you know, fellow churchgoers, you touch these folks, you make sure that they vote, and then you can say thank you and you can ask them to volunteer with you on election day. It does not hurt, and again, if you're not being told no more often, um, then you have been up to this point in the campaign, you're probably not doing enough, and that goes for a volunteer recruitment strategy as well. Go to the next one. Uh, I just want to flag because obviously legal issues with voting, absentee, and earlier are in the news a lot lately. I just pulled this from the New York City website. If you ask for a uh, request of absentee ballot and then you decide to show up and vote early or vote on election day, you'll be given an affidavit that ballot, which is different. It is a legal tool that can eventually be used, but let's not go there. If we can avoid this confusion, this step, this, um, you know, someone calling your office saying, they wouldn't let me vote, they made me fill out an affidavit about, 
just let's cut that out of the process, but I want you all to be aware that this experience might be different for voters if they request an absentee but then choose to show up in person. The purpose of that is not submitting two votes for a person. Um, so other sort of general priorities, right? Data over visibility. It feels really good to see supporters you know, holding signs for you. It feels really good to see your name in store windows and in windows um, throughout the district. But data is much more important. So the amount of calls that you can make, doors you can knock, where you actually have feedback, where you're talking to folks, understanding you know, whether or not they're for you, whether or not they have voted, uh, and any sort of issues that may be on the table for them as a voter if they're undecided. We are gonna prioritize data over visibility. So call time, time on doors, as opposed to just making the rounds and shaking hands. Uh, you know, we have to check our egos a bit more in these last five weeks. And again, be, be ready, no softball calls, like be ready to be convincing the voters that are really only gonna be convinced by talking to the candidate and building trust in a relationship. Um, staying organized is huge. Um, so, you know, we're gonna hear from an app that I think is a really impressive sort of way of organizing your data and contacting voters. But whatever your system is, and it can be an Excel spreadsheet, you need to stay organized. We need to know who has voted um, so that we can take them off the list and we're not wasting money. We have limited time and resources, so we need to be aware of who's voted. We need to be aware of how much somebody's given you. We need to know if they've then pledged another $20 this week, that we're not paying them again this week. Um, and so making sure that you're sort of on top of every aspect of your campaign. And again, this is a great opportunity to utilize volunteers. So in these next five weeks, get somebody from the College of Republicans. You know, get somebody with a data um, background or passion, or I mean, just the fact that, that they know how to use an Excel spreadsheet would be enough. Um, but making sure that you're not oversharing your data, but you're assigning somebody and delegating that responsibility to make sure that it's organized. You need to know how many voters you still need before election day. You need to know how many of them are banked and have voted. And at the precinct level, this is going to be really important to have insight on election day based on the number of folks that have cast their vote and the number that you know have come in from that precinct, whether or not you're going to win the election and whether or not you've been successful. Um, earn media over these next five weeks. You know, I'm not going to go in depth into media strategy, um, but one of the things that we talked about last month is the fact that you know motion is better than being behind the scenes. So you've got to be out there doing something, saying something, likely challenging what's already going on in order to get some earned media. But earned media isn't just newspapers. It is blogs. It is um, you know listservs. So folks in your district that are influencers. It is text chains. Um, it is asking somebody who is an ardent supporter of yours if they can tell 10 friends about it. Um, and so just think about earning media and trying to reach net new people. And then be consistent with your messaging. So even if that represents a change or a shift because some new issue has come up here in the city that you're really excited about and passionate about, the voters are going to need to hear it five to seven times for it to really stick. So if what you want is to control what they're thinking about when they go to the polls, you know, if that is funding for our law enforcement, you're going to need to say that over and over and over again. It doesn't mean you don't have a diverse platform, but if, if the law enforcement officers in your district don't hear you say that multiple times over and be consistent on that issue, then they're not going to associate voting for you with achieving the kind of change or progress that they want in that area. So be really, really consistent. That can be different for different groups, but you got to be consistent about what message a voter is hearing about your campaign. Um, and, and that's really just to control them going to the ballot box, looking down, seeing your name, and knowing what that means to cast a vote for you. And so with that, um, these final weeks are a sprint. So it is going to be crazy. It's going to be longer days. It's going to be more stressful. Um, it's going to be new people coming into the campaign to help. Um, and volunteer management can be one of the most stressful pieces of this. But there is a clear finish line. Right? There is an election day. So anything that you put in now, any amount of work, the grunt, the grind, is going to be worth it. And this is going to end. Um, so with five weeks left, it's an okay time to say, all right, we really need to, to pick up the pace. 
uh, compared to what the campaign has looked like until now. So again, general advice for candidates, you know, having been a campaign manager, columns director, uh, worked directly with candidates, it's just, it, it's going to be more boots on the ground and it's going to be uncomfortable, but that's okay. That is what every candidate out there is feeling. And you know, we heard from Councilwoman Palladino, and she was the epitome of doing the work, living in the fight, um, and staying in it right up until election day. So, uh, on election day, you know, don't stop contacting voters until they voted. Uh, try and bank as much as you can early. Um, stay really organized, and I think you'll be successful. So we're super happy to be here support. I'm happy to talk offline or after the fact about any of these aspects in particular. I just sort of wanted to give you a general 10,000 foot feel for these next five weeks. Okay. Thanks. Maureen, thank you so much. A lot of insight. Maureen highlighted these last five weeks are intense. Uh, I was a first time candidate at 21 and I was nervous. I thank gosh I had close family and friends that came out, helped me 